Welcome to this evening's programme. First tonight, the former leader of Essex County Council has appeared in court on six charges of false accounting. The Tory peer, Lord Hanningfield, has been charged under his name of Paul White and appeared before City of Westminster magistrates. It's alleged he claimed expenses for staying in London when he was instead returning to his home in Essex. Claims he strenuously denies. Well, his legal team argue the ancient law of parliamentary privilege means he cannot be prosecuted. Our political correspondent, Matthew Hudson, was in court. Lord Hanningfield was in bullish mood when we caught up with him at his home near Chelmsford early this morning. I have done nothing dishonest ever. I've given 40 years of voluntary service unpaid to this community, to Essex and public. Saved them millions of pounds. I've done nothing dishonest and I'm sure it's all going to work out fine for me in the end. So you're confident you can clear your name? Absolutely confident. I've done nothing dishonest and never will do. From the red leather benches where Lord Hanningfield sits in the House of Lords to Horsefree Road Magistrates Court is a short five-minute stroll. This media scrum was what awaited the Lord on his arrival. He's been charged under his given name, Paul White, with stealing thousands of pounds through false expenses claims. Lord Hanningfield faces six charges of false accounting under the Theft Act, relating to 13 claims for subsistence allowances that he made. The prosecution case is that he claimed for overnight stays in London when in fact he had returned to his home in Essex. As the six charges were put to him, Lord Hanningfield replied not guilty in a clear voice. Lord Hanningfield has been one of the most powerful politicians in the East, leader of the region's largest council, Essex. He oversaw a budget of around £2 billion, and he was an opposition front bencher in the Lords. He's now resigned from both positions. During the eight-minute hearing, it emerged that Lord Hanningfield's legal team will argue that the courts have no jurisdiction over him because his actions were covered by parliamentary privilege. Those arguments will be heard at a Crown Court before any trial can take place. Lord Hanningfield appeared immediately after three Labour MPs, Elliot Morley, David Chater and Jim Devine, had all denied claiming false expenses. Constitutional experts say this is an unprecedented situation. Since the 17th century, constitutional law has been very clear that there is something problematic about hauling MPs before a court, particularly where it relates to their freedom of speech within Parliament. It very much is at the margins of the law. Today, it's been reported police are investigating the expenses of another Labour MP, Harry Cohen. It's alleged the East London MP claimed around £70,000 for a second home in his constituency while renting out his main house in Colchester. Lord Hanningfield faced an undignified departure after his case was adjourned until March the 30th at Southwark Crown Court. His spokesman said he was devastated by the prosecution after devoting 40 years of his life to public service. Well, a short while ago, Matthew Hudson joined us from Westminster. I started by asking him about accusations that the four politicians were trying to use parliamentary privilege to avoid going to trial. Well, yes, and the lawyer representing the three Labour MPs said his clients wanted to make it clear that they were doing no such thing, that they honestly believed that their expenses formed part of their work as MPs and that therefore they were covered by parliamentary privilege. In other words, it is the law of the land that only Parliament can decide whether the expenses that they claimed were justified or not. So, Matt, when is this likely to come to trial, do you think? Well, Beck, in the next hearing, maybe on March the 30th, but the trial, I'm guessing, is a long way off, probably in the autumn. There is, of course, this aspect of parliamentary privilege that has to be decided by the judge before it even comes to trial. I should stress that the Lord is not standing trial alongside the three Labour MPs. At the moment, their cases are running in tandem, but there's no reason why that should necessarily persist in the future. Uh, the Lord is very much standing trial on his own. OK, Matt, thanks very much. Next, the four-year-old boy from Cambridgeshire who has to have a new pint of blood every fortnight simply to stay alive. Jamie Andrews from Folksworth has a one in six billion genetic condition which affects his red blood cell count. So, until he gets the bone marrow transplant he needs, transfusions along with constant medication are his only option. Rhiannon Mills has been to meet him. It's Thomas Bishamosh. Jamie Andrews only has time for Thomas the Tank Engine today. His mum, Sarah, has a lot more on her mind. 
You can't tell by looking at him, but Jamie has an incredibly rare genetic disorder, diamond black fan anemia. Only around 100 people in the UK have it. He's also missing up to 30 other chromosomes in his genetic makeup, a disorder doctors and nurses had never seen before. It can be almost like living a double life, if you like. We've got kind of um, the life where, where we've got family life, where it's, everything's normal or as normal as can be. And then we've got the, the other side of the coin where, you know, J is Jamie going to be sick tomorrow? Are we going to be in the hospital tomorrow? You know, is he going to need a blood transfusion in a few days' time? For a lot of the time, Jamie is just like this, full of energy. It's hard to believe that he's so poorly, really. But all that energy is coming from one thing. It may sound a little bit gory, but it's other people's blood that's helping him out and transfusions that he has to have once every fortnight. You see, the condition means that Jamie's body can't produce any red blood cells because of failures in his bone marrow. Red blood cells are needed to carry the oxygen around our bodies, so without transfusions, he could slip into a coma and die. Each 475 millilitres of blood come from a single donor, meaning that nearly 100 people have kept Jamie alive since he was born. He was only diagnosed when his blood samples were sent to America. Sarah is ashamed to say that she didn't donate blood in the past. She does now. We rely on blood donors very much so for Jamie. He, w he wouldn't be alive without that. And I can remember walking into the donation centre and sort of seeing all these people lined up, ready to give blood. And I must admit, it, it put, a, put a bit of a tear in my eye, to be honest. Only a bone marrow transplant will cure Jamie. A match has been found, but because of medical problems, he can't have it yet, meaning he'll have to rely on those blood donations and the generosity of strangers for a little while longer. Rhiannon Mills, Anglia News at Folksworth, near Peterborough. Yeah, let's hope he gets that transplant soon. Yeah, and of course, if you do want to give blood, then you can find all the information you need on their website, which is www.blood.co.uk. Now, the amount our banks charge us if we go into an overdraft without permission mm. is certainly controversial. That's one word for it. it. Anyway, indeed. a challenge by the Office of Trading ended up in the Supreme Court just four months ago. But a bank customer from Leon C in Essex is fighting to get his money back. He says it's unfair that he was charged £80 for going just 15p into the red. Norma Ramsey has this. Louis Mathis from Leon C is like most 20-year-olds. Um, arches and lemonade and a pint of standard, please. Okay. He likes a pint. There's six pounds, please. Oh, and he has to be careful with his money from his full-time job. But when he bought a round of drinks at a bar in Southend in November, he accidentally became 15p overdrawn. Over four months, his bank Santander charged him £80 in unauthorised overdraft fees. You think 15p, you put that in a charity pot, don't you? At the end of the day, you put 15p in a charity pot or you throw it on the floor. You wouldn't expect to pick it up if you see 15p on the floor and then they charge you £80 on top. Two days' wages. Santander has refunded £25, but Lewis is trying to claim back the full amount. A spokesman added, We believe that our fees are fair, legal and appropriate and clearly explained to our customers. Mr Mathers was given plenty of notice of the fees which were being applied to his account. It would have been quite simple for him to have kept an eye on his balance and avoid the unauthorised overdraft fees. With cash available 24 hours a day, it's very easy to slip into an unauthorised overdraft. In fact, the banks make £2.6 billion every year from overdraft fees. The Office of Fair Trading tried to see if they had the power to rule against unfair bank charges. But the regulator lost in the Supreme Court in November. For unauthorised borrowing, the, the rates are high. They're always going to be high because you're, in, you're going over your agreed borrowing limit. So there's an element of risk there for the bank uh, that they're attempting to um, get some recompense for. I guess the question is whether that level is set correctly, whether they're actually using that to um, accrue additional... Uh, profit. Lewis is spending a lot of time at the cash point, not taking money out, but checking his balance so he doesn't get caught out again. Lorna Ramsey, Anglia News, Leon C. In other news. Um